Today, I wanted to share with you three essay collections that changed the way I think. Now, I'm typically a fiction reader. I love sci-fi and fantasy. I'm reading some literary fiction right now. Uh, and I overall just am enamored with the idea of creating imaginary worlds, imaginary situations, playing out hypotheticals and exploring concepts in that way. But every so often I get the urge to read something that's based on someone's true experience, a life that someone's lived that's different than mine and their takeaways from it. Maybe it's just about a scenario or about one small aspect of their life that they've zoomed in on. Especially when those essays and ruminations and thoughts come from authors that I've read the fiction of, I think it's really cool to see the things that they're thinking about in their own life uh, and then maybe look for similar themes or ex exploration of similar concepts in their fiction. That's not always the best approach as a reader, but I do think it's cool to see overlap there. The three collections that I've chosen today all touch on different things, and I think there's a good variety here, so hopefully you'll find something you like. The first one I wanna talk about is Writers on Writing. This is an essay collection compiled from the New York Times uh, that has about, I think, 46 different authors contributing to it. There's a variety of different essays, all from different authors with varying styles. And they're all talking about their writing process or how they write or how they come up with ideas or what their career has been like as a writer. It's all just ruminations on the theme of writing. This was originally assigned to me in high school as a summer reading book. I didn't actually read it <laughs> at that point. I revisited this earlier this year and now that I write a bit more than I used to, this had a completely different meaning for me and I really got a lot out of it. One in particular that I really enjoyed was called To Invigorate Literary Minds, Start Moving Literary Feet by Joyce Carol Oates. In this one, she talks about how she goes for runs every day and how that has completely changed her writing process and it is an integral part of that process for her, which is something that resonates very deeply with me. I'm a runner. I get a lot of my ideas when I run and I understand the power of endurance running and, and what that does for my mind. Uh, but, but seeing it put into words here and seeing the way that she beautifully talked about it in her essay in this really solidified that, that appreciation for me. So hopefully with such a variety of authors in this, you'll be able to find something that you connect with as well. And regardless, it's just chock full of incredible writing advice. So this is one that I definitely recommend checking out if you're at all interested in writing yourself or just the way that authors think in general. This actually includes a few big names like Kurt Vonnegut, John Updike, Elie Wiesel, Susan Sontag, Louise Erdrich, Barbara Kingsolver. Those are just a few of the names that I recognize on this, but there are so many incredible authors that contributed. I've gotten a lot of tangible advice from this that I apply to my actual practice of writing in my everyday life. I know that I can revisit this book, find some of the advice that authors graciously provided in this, sort of find my rhythm again and apply some of this advice. So I definitely want to check this one out again and, and sort of remind myself of the great things that they talked about. While I didn't love every single essay in this collection, I still think that each of the essays were worth reading because in part it informed me of who I'm not as a writer. There were some that I read where I was like, this is so antithetical to my experience as a writer uh, that that it seems like it would be useless but in reality it's more just informing my se sense of self as an artist and who I want to be versus who I don't want to be and what feels true to me and what doesn't. So I do think that these are all useful regardless but there were a lot that I liked more than others in this. So writers on writing definitely recommend it. The next one is actually a book that I got the day it came out, just because I happened to see a TikTok about it, that is John Green's The Anthropocene Review. Now, this one's gotten really popular and for good reason. I haven't read any of John Green's fiction. Uh, I just wasn't in the demographic it was marketed to. Having watched John and Hank Green's Vlogbrothers videos for many years, their crash course videos, all their educational content, and now as an adult seeing John Green create such like a high impact essay collection is really cool to me and also just showed me how great he is when he puts pen to paper. So the concept of this is that he talks about very human things that he notices about life these days. Uh, so things like scratch and sniff stickers, diet Dr. Pepper, teddy bears, air conditioning, the internet, our capacity for wonder, the notes app, plague. He actually, he did write this during uh, the pandemic. So so there are some undertones of, of living through a, a big world event like that. And it's overall just a really beautiful, optimistic look at humanity and our place within the cosmos and, and life and all of it. Now that I think about it, I do want to revisit this one as well, just because I remember it reinvigorating me and changing my outlook just enough to see the beauty in the mundane things around me. Uh, he's from Indianapolis and he lives there now, I believe. And sort of seeing the way that he talks about a place that he sees as very like 
kind of bland and normal, but the way that he finds beauty in it and talks about it in a beautiful way is really cool to see. And, and that comes through in all of these essays, whether he's talking about Haley's Comet or the National Hot Dog Eating Championship, his approach to life and the way that he thinks about these things is, is something that changed a mindset within me and allowed me to see things in a more beautiful way. And that, in my opinion, is invaluable and indispensable, in, especially in an essay collection. And last but not least, No Time to Spare by Ursula K. Le Guin. Now, I read this over the summer while I was at summer camp, uh, which is a really interesting time to be reading. It's not <laughs> like great for getting a lot of reading done, but I picked an essay collection because I knew I'd be able to pick it up and put it down frequently. These are the compiled blog posts of Ursula K. Le Guin uh, while she was in her 80s. So in this, she has some meditations on getting older, reflections upon the life of her cat, Pard. And there, there are a few essays that are almost from Pard's perspective, which is really cool. And the way that she talks about Pard, uh, how Pard chose her rather than the other way around, <laughs> how Pard feels about box elder beetles that get into their house. One of my favorites is Pard and the time machine, uh, which is really, like absolutely beautifully written. And it's just about her cat playing with the kind of buzzing hard drive on her, on her desk. <laughs> and it's stuff like that, that Le Guin writes so poetically about. There's a lot of valuable insights on aging, which I think is something that I see few people writing about as well as Le Guin did. She passed away in 2018 and her outlook about aging, her thoughts about getting older, her thoughts about the way that society treats getting older are all fascinating to me and also make me feel so much better about one day getting older, as we all do. One of my favorite quotes is from her essay, The Sissy Strikes Back. There's this one paragraph, I've known clear-headed, clear-hearted people People in their 90s. They didn't think they were young. They knew with a patient, canny clarity how old they were. If I'm 90 and believe I'm 45, I'm headed for a very bad time trying to get out of the bathtub. If I'm 70 and think I'm 40, I'm fooling myself to the extent of almost certainly acting like an awful fool. Actually, I've never heard anybody over 70 say that you're only as old as you think you are. Younger people say it to themselves or to each other as encouragement. When they say it to somebody who actually is old, they don't realize how stupid it is and how cruel it may be. At least there isn't a poster of it. The shame that young people think that old people have about getting old and turning it on its head and calling us out on that. She talks about how the key to being happy in your old age isn't thinking that you're young, it's about being happy in your old age, which to me is really like inspiring and refreshing to hear because you know, that isn't often what we hear about getting old. So that among many other things makes this well worth reading. There are multiple times while I was reading this collection that I teared up, that I actually cried because her words moved me so much. Le Guin, it, if you followed the channel for a while, you know that Le Guin is my favorite author. At this point, she's surpassed all the others. Uh, she's my favorite author. I wanna add that Le Guin also talks about other things not just old age and her cat. She talks about the literature business, her experience in the publishing world and what it's like to respond to fan mail from like adults versus children and, and what that looks like, what that demand on her time feels like, which is really interesting to me and a side of this all that I've never seen before. There's one essay where she talks about the first time she hired someone to help her out with all the administrative tasks that come with being a successful author. Uh, and the way that that's so heartfelt, the way that she pours herself out on the Page. The way that she talks about someone who was her employee, but more so was her friend, it is really touching. And that's one of the ones that really stuck with me in this. She has such a love for the people in her life and, and it really shows in these essays. And her ability to move so beautifully between fiction and nonfiction, even within the span of one essay, <laughs> is is absolutely masterful and the way that she talks about things uh, never fails to to move me to make my mind better than it was before i read it so those are my three favorite essay collections that i've read so far if you're not sure what to read next and you want to see my process for choosing my next book uh, check out this video here where i show you my whole process for choosing what book to read next if you've made it this far in the video i think you'd be a great fit to be a subscriber of this channel and a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting what i do here it's because of them and all of you watching that I'm able to do what I do and share my book recommendations with you. So if you're interested in being a patron, having your name up here and other benefits as well, there's a link in the description to become a patron. Okay, that's all. See ya.